If you've ever recorded something and thought that the timing was perfect, only to find that on playback, it's all a little bit off. Well, it could be that you need to adjust the latency offset in Reaper's preferences. Whenever you record from an audio input, Reaper uses the audio device driver's information about latency to automatically put what you recorded into time. It's usually pretty close, but if the driver isn't telling Reaper the right thing, the timing will be slightly off. So first, let's look at Reaper's audio device preferences. So preferences, audio, device. If you're on Windows, you want to use an ACO driver when recording. In most cases, this will have the lowest latency and the best performance. It will also report the latency to Reaper. On Mac, there's no ACO, it's core audio drivers. So for whatever audio device you're using, you wanna make sure you're using the uh, most up-to-date version of that device driver. While we're here, let's set the latency to whatever we normally use to record. Um, 64 and 128 are common low latency block sizes. So I have 128 set here. I'm also running at 48 kilohertz because I'm doing video. Just use whatever you normally use. If you record at 96K, and 64 samples, use that setting right now. Now let's look at the recording preferences. So preferences audio recording. Down at the bottom, there is this checkbox, use audio driver reported latency. Make sure that that's turned on unless you want to completely manually correct the latency. If you've never had this option enabled, this will make a big difference for you. Without this, we'd never be able to record with direct monitoring on our interfaces and get anything that's even close to in time with our project. And then down here, we have four options for manually correcting the latency. So we have output and input in milliseconds and samples. You can set either one. I feel like input makes the most sense to adjust and adjusting the samples will be more accurate. So how do we know how many samples to add here? We're going to set up a loop back test. We're going to connect the cable from the output to the input and using a test signal, determine how many samples of offset is needed. I was going to show you how to make a test signal, but I realized that Reaper has an easier way using the reinsert plugin. Okay, so close preferences. Turn off your speakers and unplug your headphones. We're going to be sending a full scale signal out and the wiring is potentially a feedback loop, so it could get loud enough to break something. I'm gonna show you on a basic audio interface, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, but it's really the same on any device. I'm gonna take a TRS cable, connect it to one of the outputs and the other to one of the inputs. Make sure that it's a line input. So if there's a switch, set it to line, not high Z or instrument. And most importantly, if there's a direct monitor switch, turn that off. That will prevent a feedback loop. If your audio interface has a software mixer, make sure that the inputs are muted or turned down all the way. We don't want to make a feedback loop. And then we're turning the volume all the way up. So I'm doing the same thing on the audio fuse. I'm using output three and input three. I'm going to set my output to speaker B. My input is turned all the way down on my line input three, and my audio output is turned all the way up. I just couldn't get the camera and lights to film that, so that's why I used the 2i2. So back in Reaper, we need one track. I'm going to alt-click the routing button just to make sure that it doesn't go to the output. And if you've never seen that before, it's just unchecking the master send. Alt-click is just a shortcut for that. And we'll insert the reinsert plugin in the Cocos folder. So in here, we're going to set the main output and none for the right output, no MIDI output. And we wanna make sure that we're coming in on line three and nothing on the right side. So set this up the same way that you wired that cable from your output and input. In my case, it's main out three and line input three. Before we do this next step, we have to make sure that the output is unmuted and we'll click on ping detect. So I got a reading of 65 samples. You can do that again. And again, 65 samples. I'm gonna mute this again. And now we can take this number, put it into preferences. Uh, we're gonna set the input manual offset to 65 samples and click okay. And and unmute and ping detect again. And we should verify that it is now at zero samples. I was gonna show you a different way to do the loopback test, but this plugin actually makes it a lot simpler. Uh, the other way involves zooming in really close, making a time selection in samples and 
it's kind of a pain. Reinsert made that really simple. It routed the output of the track out, did that signal for us, and it detected the latency that came back in. A couple more things before we wrap up. Anytime you change the sample rate or the audio device block size, technically this number will need to change. I feel like in most situations, it's still going to be close enough, and you can optimize the setting for your usual recording block size. If you normally monitor through a digital connection like SPDIF into a monitor controller, you'll want to do the loopback with the SPDIF cable instead of an analog cable. And the last thing to mention is that this only applies to signals coming through the inputs. By that I mean, if you route one track to another, record the output, the manual latency offset isn't needed and is not used. So that's it for this tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.